Brothers, I'm gonna get my mics right. Brothers and sisters in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. At the very heart of our God is, is generosity. That's the character of the God we believe in. A God who loves us so dearly and so well from the very beginning created us, gave us life, keeps our hearts beating in our chest, gives us breath to breathe into our lungs. Our God gives and gives and gives, and then when God saw that we are broken, God gave himself. I mean, this amazing story that we celebrate every Christmas, the idea of a God who loves his people so much he empties himself of his godness, that he gave up being God to become like us, to become human, to be born as a little baby, to grow up, to, to uh, teach and to love and to care and to heal. And then the story goes that because our, our Lord Jesus Christ talked about God's love in such a way that was offensive to people, he was arrested and convicted and sentenced to death. And then this final miracle on the cross that as God is giving his very life for us, this exchange takes place that is beyond our comprehension, but God takes our sins upon himself and gives us righteousness and eternal life in return. This is a God of generosity, of, of giving beyond our comprehension, a God of, of absurd generosity, of a giving that's not even sensible, of a giving that just keeps pouring itself out for his people. This is what our God does. Now we have, in the last three weeks, this is week four, been in the series. We're trying to figure out what, is, what does Jesus want for us, from us? Week one was do not fear. So we have a God who wins in the end, a God who gives us this promise of eternal life. And so because of that, we can live lives of courage and fearlessness, be bold. Week two is do not judge. See the people around you as Jesus sees them, as, as beautiful, beloved children of God. Last week was do not worry, Jesus said. And so we talked about how he takes our worries upon him. We can entrust our burdens into the hands of Christ. Let go and let God. Well, this week we talk about do not, about go and give. Go and give, Jesus says. And I picked this gospel and I, I kind of regret doing it. Because this gospel, Jesus says to the rich young euler, go and give, go sell all that you have and give the money to the poor. But every time we read this text, we have to take a moment because we want to argue with Jesus. Because this text is offensive to our ears. Because we want to say, well, come on, Jesus, if everybody does this, if we all embrace poverty, then there'll be nobody to care for us anymore. I and mean, if we all give up all of our stuff and go down to the food shelf, there'd be nobody giving money to the food shelf. I mean, there's an absurdity to what Jesus is saying if it becomes a universal ethic. If all of us leave our homes and our jobs and go into an itinerant lifestyle where we walk around, you know, begging for our food, then there'd be nobody left to make the food. Do you understand, Jesus, that this doesn't make any sense? And so we first want to take this text and argue with it. But as important as it is to wrestle with the gospel text, I don't want to do that today. I don't want to talk about the deep exegesis message of it or anything. In fact, I did that about six months ago. You can go back on YouTube and, and watch that sermon. No, I just want to get to the very heart of what his message is, which is give. Give. Deeply and generously give. I mean, go ahead and enjoy your house. This isn't about not enjoying the pleasures of creation and the gifts that God has given us. Go home and enjoy your, your dry home and your, the roof over your head and the pot roast you've got cooking in the crock pot right now. Absolutely. We're, we're meant to enjoy the gifts that God gives us. Don't feel guilty about that. That's not what this is about. Instead, it's an invitation to generosity. An invitation to be like God, to give and give and give, to give deeply and profoundly of yourself as often as you possibly can, to be generous in, with, and under every single part of your life, to give, to give financially, to give of your money. Now, this isn't a stewardship sermon. Jesus does not say, go sell your stuff and give the money to the church. That's not what this is about today. This is about just giving of yourself to people outside yourself. And it's not about haggling. Don't Go around and try to say, God, well, what about eight and a half percent? Is that good? I mean, with their taxes, before or after, can we go down to eight? 
No, just, just give. We're not called to be like the Pharisees that divided their spices. Just give. Give financially to the people around you. Give of your time that is so desperately needed in this world. Give generously of your time to people in the hospital, to the people in the prison, to lonely people, people desperate for a warm body to sit with them and listen to them and care for them. Give of your, your gifts, your talents, the things that you can do. Share those with the people around you, with your, with your community, with your church, with your neighbors. Give, give to your spouse, give to your children, give to strangers on the streets, give to the, the clerk selling you gas, give to the people that drive you absolutely nuts, that you just want to wring their necks, but don't wring their necks. Instead, give, give to uh, the person behind you in the, the drive through give to your children, give to your neighbor, give to the person sitting next to you at the pew, give deeply in creative ways and surprising ways and ways that you didn't expect yourself it just suddenly happened just give because this is who our god is at our at its very heart of our god is this radical absurd generosity and he has created you in his image so that's what you're made for you're made to give and when we do we find out this it's not so well kept secret that when you have a gift to give, something meaningful and real, and you can share that with somebody who needs it, there is no greater pleasure on this earth. There is nothing more delightful, no pleasure that is more fulfilling, no day better spent when you can say, I gave today. I was generous today. I was able to, to care for someone who needed, I had a gift that I could give to them that made a difference today. That is not a chore. That is not a struggle. That isn't something that we have to do because otherwise we're going to feel guilty. No, that is a gift to ourselves. It is a delight and it is a pleasure because it comes from God. Amen.